Hey friends, in today's video, we are not forgetting about those apples for our fall decorating season. Guys, my name is Tracy. I love to share crafty ideas just like today's projects. I'm so glad that you're here. If you're not already subscribed, I would love it if you do. And let's get started. These are my country tin can apples, just recycling and repurposing some fun tin cans. Here are the supplies I'm using for my tin can apples by using the little vinyl tile wraps. I really feel that it gives my apples a high end look and they turned out perfect. And so the vinyl tiles, I actually found mine at Family Dollar, but some have found theirs at Dollar Tree and maybe Dollar General. Now I just have an average size vegetable can and then this one right here, the larger one is actually a leftover can it was a formula can I just kept in my stash for my grandson because I'm like yeah I may want to use it for a project one day and that was it all right so I just uh, just measured out the cans with a black sharpie marker and just cut everything off uh, or just cut it out with my scissors now this is kind of thin and it is a little uh, you know thin and so I did kind of burn myself a little because it gets hot so I use that masking tool uh, from the Dollar Tree just to hold it down so that I would not burn myself anymore now I cut off any of the excess of that vinyl tile from one can and then I use the extra part on this uh, one right here this bigger one and so that works really good all right so then uh, I am just giving it a coat of uh, crimson color chalk paint and this covers so well I didn't want to get paint all over my hands so that's why I'm just using gloves because I just tend when I am using red paint I just tend to get it all over my hands and so I just gave it like I said one coat of the crimson color red chalk paint and then I go back later and use my sanding sponge and uh, kind of you know distress it a bit so that I give it more of a rustic look. For one of the cans, I used my smooth edge can opener to cut out the can so that I do not have any sharp edges. I just chose this because I wanted to have the lid as well as the can, but I could always use the bottom of the can like I'm doing with the bigger one. And so since I had the lid of the can, I'm just taking uh, just some Fabri-Tac glue as well as some hot glue and then I cut out a piece of that vinyl so that I would have the same look on the top and the bottom and then I'm going to just give it a coat of the red crimson color paint. Uh, I Once it was dry then I gave everything a uh, you know just some white splatter paint. I just do that with my uh, stiff brush and a stick and just go around and just give it some splatter paint uh, just for my apples. I just I'm making some country apples and this is the look that I like. All right so to make the uh, bow for my country apples I'm just uh, I just pulled out some homespun and homespun is fabric that you can see on both sides. They usually have like a gingham or a check pattern. So I'm just cutting out pieces of that as well as some muslin fabric. I just ripped it off, uh, ripped it, you know, probably about a quarter or actually about a half of an inch so that I would have the torn edges. And then I just put some pieces of that together and that is going to be my messy bow for the top of my apples. Now for the uh, kind of like the rustic part of it, I like to use this jewel recording that I get from the craft store in the jewelry section. I just uh, gave it mm, probably about, or I just made about four loops, two on each side. I think I made four loops for the smaller can and then uh, six loops, which is three on each side for the larger can. And then I just tie all of that together. For the wood stem of my 
apple. I just have this bunch from Dollar Tree. Just pulling out a couple of those that I like the size for. I'm also using some of this greenery garland I got from Hobby Lobby and that is going to be the leaves for my apple. I'm also pulling out some fine excelsior that I get from Hobby Lobby uh, or either Joann's and then I just wrap that garland that leaf garland around the stem just you know kind of until I like the look and then I just glue on my bow and that is you know this my country apple is just so cute and you can you know use these little country apples since it has the lid you can make a little gift out of it put a little something something in there and just make someone's day and so then for the larger can uh, I had turned it over you know because I'm using the bottom because this one doesn't have a lid so I'm just doing the same thing I pulled out a larger uh, wood stem and doing the same thing by putting some excelsior some of that greenery and then I will add the bow and they just turned out so cute um, what I did now I didn't get that on film but to roughen it up and give it a little more rustic look I did take my sanding sponge and just go over it a bit and just kind of exposing some some of that under color and it just turned out so cute I cannot wait to make more of these these just look great in my portfolio with my orange tin can pumpkins as well as the white tin can pumpkins and I do have some leopard tin can pumpkins if you like that style I will leave links to all of those in the description if you would like to check those out you've been following me for any length of time you know that I love to take a Dollar Tree signs and paint them up and flip them into something cute just like this truck guys I hope that you love this pick and time truck just as much as I do okay these are the supplies I'm using to paint the truck um, I cut off the jute string and then uh, this truck has two holes at the top I want it to cover up I'm just using my max spec uh, patch spackle from the Dollar Tree and just put that in the holes to uh, cover them up because I didn't want those holes and uh, then what I do is I just take my sanding sponge I'm gonna uh, I'm not gonna use that give thanks part so I want to get off as much of the glitter as I can and actually it came off pretty good I had to use a bit of elbow grease but it came off pretty good and then I just used uh, I just took my uh, plaster color chalk paint and I painted um, a coat of that on I don't know it just I feel like it uh, might other paint goes on I uh, don't have to use as much as the color I don't know maybe it's a mine thing anyway so I just gave this two coats of the uh, crimson red uh, paint and um, then for the tires I just paint those black just regular black uh, this is uh, acrylic paint that I'm using and the black and the others it's just the color of paint that I had uh, I, there's no preference as to I mean you can use chalk paint or you can use acrylic paint to paint the back glass of the truck I'm just using the color drizzle gray and I just give that a couple of coats um, you know just there with my paintbrush then uh, I'm also going to be putting a bumper on it so I just use the same color of drizzle gray in my paintbrush and I use I try to get the edges of it now what I'm going to probably do with this wreath I mean what uh, with this truck is put it into a wreath uh, probably a fall apple country wreath uh, but I, I closed up those holes because you know you just never know what you want to do with that anyway I'm using this metallic silver paint that I get from Hobby Lobby uh, or you can get it at any craft store anyway and I'm gonna just kind of uh, put some of that on because it gives a glare for my uh, windshield as well as my bumper and so I just take a brush and just kind of put him in put it in random spots where it looks like there's a glare on the glass 
I'm going to use this color of it's uh, called Antique Maroon. It's an Americana brand and uh, I'm going to go ahead and do some detailing or shading to the truck. I had the uh, I had an extra truck from the Dollar Tree that was uh, I was looking at and kind of following the same uh, pattern of what they had the highlights and where they kind of had uh, different uh, like depth and dimension to this truck. Now, what I noticed is that this truck did not have uh, like tail lights on it. Um, I looked at the whole thing and I was like, yeah, this one doesn't have any tail lights. So that's why I did not put any tail lights on my truck, but I could definitely do that. And my favorite way to do tail lights is to use a red puffy paint and just you know uh, put it on there and then let that dry it kind of gives a bit of dimension to it um, so I don't know there are a lot of people that like tail lights on their trucks but I don't know let me know what you think do you think that the truck needs tail lights on it uh, the one from the Dollar Tree didn't have it but I don't know it looks cute either way For my lettering, uh, it is some God-given talent. I uh, appreciate all of your uh, sweet comments from the friends that the Lord has sent to my channel that loves this style of lettering. Now, guys, this is some God-given talent. Um, I have practiced for many years, and uh, it was determined to learn how to paint with a paintbrush. And so I say that humbly. I say that just to be encouraging to those of uh, you that want to learn how to paint with a paintbrush please don't give up uh, keep doing it you know practice on some scrap wood uh, just find a font that you like uh, if you like this uh, style of font um, I did find a free font from defont.com that is very similar. It has uh, several fonts in it that you can uh, download and install on your computer and you can print out different sayings uh, and then maybe trace it uh, onto a project with some graphite paper or tracing paper and so then you can paint over it with your paintbrush. So um, I will have a link for that in the description box below. Um, but if you are one of the friends that leaves me a sweet comment, thank you very much because you are greatly appreciated. Okay, um, to me, it's all in the details on my painted projects. And so uh, I have a liner brush now. Uh, and so I'm just kind of uh, giving some extra uh, striping to the back glass. I just have a uh, like my favorite detailing brush and then just going over and just giving some striping um, no rhyme or reason just kind of going over it and just give it some highlight I'm just using that same uh, liner brush to add some white highlights or doodling to my truck. Like I said before, guys, you'll hear me say this again. It's all in the details for me. And uh, I just think all of these small details just really brings my painted projects to life. Now to add some treads uh, to my tires, I just use my fan brush uh, and some white paint. And uh, I was kind of getting off. It was kind of clumped up a little bit on my paintbrush. And so I just kind of, you know, kind of spread those bristles out just a little bit. So now I'm taking some antique gold paint and just going back around my letters just to give it more highlight. I do this sometimes. Uh, it just really depends on what look I'm going for. Uh, I also go back through and uh, go back in between the letters with my fine sharpie marker just to add some more dimension and uh, really depth to my letters.
for my miniature apples, I'm using this pack of uh, small miniature apple ornaments that I had in my stash from many years ago. I picked these up at Hobby Lobby. The date on them said 2008, so I'm not quite sure if they still have them, uh, but I know they had lots of miniature ornaments, you know, at Hobby Lobby in their miniature ornament section. Anyway, so um, to get my apples to stick onto my truck, I'm just putting a small hole in them. I just used my um, paper piercer to stick the hole in and then I just glued the toothpick in there. And then uh, to make some of the apples green, I used uh, Apple Barrel Spring Green color and uh, painted those up and let those dry. To get my paint to stick on these slick apples, I did take some uh, of my sanding sponge and just kind of get a bit of the, uh, you know, roughen it up just a bit so that the paint would stick to it. And so then now to get uh, everything to attach to my truck is I just cut some styrofoam and painted it the same color as the truck, uh, glued that on there, and then I'm going to cover that styrofoam with some of this fine excelsior, and then I'm going to stick my apples into the uh, styrofoam where it looks like they're on the bed of the truck where it looks like the apples have just been picked and there are traveling down the road and ready to be sold maybe they're going to a farmer's market And I just used some of that same fall greenery garland. I just cut pieces of it off and just uh, just added it to some of the spots. It's wire, so it just sticks very nicely into that styrofoam. Guys, I love this pink and time truck. I cannot wait uh, to make more. I am going to be probably put the, putting this into a wreath because uh, y'all know uh, if you follow me for any length of time, you know that I do design wreaths for a local uh, business. And so this is going to look so cute on a country burlap wreath. This apple project is using some landscape timbers. Now these we had on hand, but you can find landscape timbers at any home improvement store like Lowe's, Home Depot, that type of thing. And so what I did is I had my husband cut them down to size one of them this is uh, three inches and this one is four inches and I just took my hand sandpaper and just kind of you know uh, took off a bit of the roughness and the paint I'm going to use is this crimson color of chalk paint uh, by Waverly I picked that up at Walmart and so for the tops of my apples I'm using these uh, little cut stems that I got a bag of them from the Dollar Tree but you can always you know go out in your yard and see if you can find any sticks now uh, for the paint I just gave them two coats of the crimson color chalk paint I just chose this color uh, not any particular reason it's just what I decided to use and so uh, I let that dry in between that and we're going to decorate these up you could saw you know see by the picture we're just going to add some fun uh, fun things and uh, make these apples really cute so then now to attach the small wooden uh, stems to the top of my apples. I'm just using a combination of Fabri-Tac glue as well as some hot glue. The Fabri-Tac is the uh, permanent hold and then the hot glue is like the instant hold. And then I'm going to decorate the tops of these small apples with just some fun things. I just have some Excelsior. I have some uh, faux ivy garland for the leaves. I also have some um, fun fabric that I'm going to be using to make a small messy bow and just make these little apples just so cute and fun.
I do usually splatter paint my paint it projects, but for some reason I just wasn't in the mood to do a splatter paint. I know, gas. <laughs> anyway, so what I decided to do, I just have this small white ink pad and I just ran it across like the high parts of the timber and just kind of highlighted the edges of it a little bit. But you know, splattering would work as well. So for the little messy bow for the top of my apples, I'm just using some muslin fabric as well as some gingham fabric and then just some black and white polka dotted fabric. Um, you know, just get this at any craft store, any place that is uh, uh, has fabric sold on the bolt, you usually can find these types of fabrics. Anyway, so I do like to tear my fabric to give a, a, a ragged, jagged edge. And so then I just have these strips of fabric, they're probably about, mm, I don't know, six inches. And so I just kind of crisscross them here and just going to make a, uh, just a bow for the tops of my apples. And then I'm also going to include some raffia because no country project is complete without some <laughs> raffia. I love me some raffia. And uh, so anyway, uh, sometimes if the uh, strand is just a little thicker than what I like it to be, uh, I will like pull those apart. Raffia is, for me, it's very easy to work with. And so a place right now that I can find my raffia, uh, the raffia that I do like is in the Walmart craft section. I do like that raffia that you can get there in the Walmart craft section. Anyway, so then what I'm doing here is just a uh, trimming off with my pinking shears. Uh, I am just trimming off a bit of the fabric because I do leave it long uh, on purpose so that I can go back later and trim it up a, a bit. It's just kind of what I like to do, just kind of sharing that tip. That's what works for me. Uh, I have my fabric on my ribbon to be just a little bit longer so then I can go back and clean it up and where it looks really nice and so then what I'll do is I'll just glue it right there uh, you know right there beside the stem I don't want to cover up my stem I want it to complement the stem uh, for my apple next apple project is my ribbon apples now these turned out much cuter than what i kind of had in my head so let me share how i made them i just used some two and a half inch uh, check ribbon uh, probably got this ribbon from craft outlet and what I did is I cut uh, two strips of like about they're probably about six inches long and I took off or cut off one of the edges of the ribbons and uh, because I did not want that to you know like that seam to be uh, you know in the middle of my apple and so then I just glued my uh, two pieces of ribbon together because one uh, I wanted my apple to be a bit wider than only two and a half inches and so that is what's uh, why I glued the two pieces together anyway so then I'm kind of trying to make the uh, like indention you're not really going to see it because I have the bottom uh, covered up but it just kind of helped me with tapering my ribbon uh, or my faux apple uh, just kind of tapering it up and I'm going to make a pocket and that is what I'm going to stuff I just have just some uh, just some stuffing that you can get like polyfill from uh, any craft store or Walmart that kind of thing and that is what I stuffed in the middle of my apple uh, you know to to make it puffy and so then I just continued to glue it just kind of tapered it up and uh, I just like here I have some stuffing and I'm just using you know just something that I grabbed and just kind of help stuff that in and then the for the stems of my apples what I'm using is I had these stems that I picked up from uh, Hobby Lobby in the Christmas section. I think it was in the Christmas section uh, that over there at Hobby Lobby. But you can get sticks out in your yard. I just have all of this stuff guys and I just need to use it up. So I'm just trying to use some of the things that I have on hand. And so then now what I'm doing is um, I have my stem and then I just uh, used my pinking shears to kind of give it a decorative edge at the top. And what you see there is I kind 
kind of like did an indention in the top uh, just kind of like where the dip of the apple was and so that just kind of made me feel better and so then I'm showing another apple I just put some more stuffing in and just glue that stem down in there and then I just glue the tops together uh, you know so that they make the small apple pillow in my country projects I love to add some splattering so I just have some uh, black paint and my stiff stencil brush and a, a small toothpick and I'm just going around and I am uh, just giving some splattering to my apples uh, but then I was looking at it and I said ah. It needs a little like highlight at the top or on the side, uh, you know, for the apple, how the apples have the little swoosh. So I pulled out my slick white puffy paint and I gave each of the apples a like a highlight or a little swoosh whatever you want to call it uh, to uh, you know one part of the apple and so I have to let that completely dry uh, because puffy paint takes just a bit to dry and so um, some of the little highlights I made a little bit thicker than what I liked but it was all right it's all good because this is just my little project that I'm gonna put on my shelf while my puffy paint is drying on my apples I'm gonna work on my crate that I'm gonna put my apples in so I have this small crate from the Dollar Tree as well as some antique wax from uh, Walmart and so my favorite way to uh, stain my small wood items is a tip that I got from uh, junk to jewels off of Facebook uh, this is how she uh, puts stain on her projects she just takes a baby wipe and just wipes it on her wooden projects and just you know wipes, wipes off any of the excess and so ever since I saw her do that I said oh my goodness this is just so it's so easy and uh, it just works for me I uh, just have a small baby wipe and just you know stain my projects and so then my apples are completely dry now and like I had mentioned earlier that it was just a little bit too some of them are a little bit uh, too thick so hey <laughs> we're gonna mask it a bit with some splattering yes guys that's what I did I just pulled out my uh, brush and uh, toothpick and just you know added some more splatter splatters makes my heart very happy now uh, to decorate the tops of my apples I have this fall foliage or this little garland I think I picked this up at Hobby Lobby but I can't remember it doesn't have like a brand on it I don't know I've had this in my stash like I have mentioned I have so much stuff that I need to use so I'm trying to do that this year uh, and so I just have this small um, leaf garland foliage and so then I cut that off and that is what this garland has like wire in it and so it twists very nice on my stems and so I just used like a dab of hot glue just to secure it just a little bit. You know a country apple project is not complete without some raffia yes ma'am so I just tied some raffia bows to the tops of my apples now uh, for my crate I have these block styrofoam that I'm gonna cut down a bit uh, because I want my apples to sit up a little bit more than what they did I, they kind of sunk down in that crate and so I just cut my styrofoam down to size I'm gonna uh, be using some excelsior but before I do that I want to go ahead and tie a small muslin fabric bow around you know my box just to kind of you know give it a little bit a decorative look to it and so it's just like a one inch muslin fabric I just ripped to have the torn edges and so then I just tie that in a simple knot I use my pinking shears to kind of uh, make it easier and also gives a decorative touch to it and so then now I'm just gluing everything down I have my styrofoam and then um, cut down the size and then I'm gonna put the excelsior in there um, I like the fine excelsior I think it just gives a bit of a whimsiness and I find mine over at Joann's craft store that's my favorite place to find this whimsy excelsior and so then I'm just setting my um, apples in 
you know, the little crate and just kind of filling in the Excelsior just around just to give it a bit of whimsiness. So then uh, now I'm going to make a sign. I have some of these chalkboard uh, picks labels from the Dollar Tree. Uh, the marker is a Posca uh, PC uh, one. That's the size that I'm using. And so I'm just hand lettering apples for sale. And so you know me I love my happy dots and so I'm just putting some happy dots on the uh, on the ends of my letters pit berries is just what this little project needed now these berries I do find at Hobby Lobby uh, they're on a garland and uh, usually I can find the garlands throughout the year and if you're lucky that week uh, Hobby Lobby has them on sale anyway so I just twist them off of the garland and then I use the individual picks for my projects and my wreaths and that kind of thing. So then now I'm just, you know, kind of inserting everything together, kind of putting some more Excelsior. I will insert my sign. And so that's one of the reasons why I use the styrofoam to have something for everything to stick into as well as, uh, you know, gives me some height. And so my apples will sit up and I love these little ribbon apples. And I hope that you do too. If you are liking these projects, I would love it if you would give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you are new, because I would love to have you uh, join my little country family. Okay, this next Apple project is using some of supplies from Dollar Tree and Hobby Lobby. The small house is from uh, Dollar Tree as well as these apple cutouts that I did pick up uh, from the Dollar Tree. There are several of them in the package but we're just using one. The scrapbook paper is from this paper pad from Hobby Lobby and it's in the olive green color and so what I did is I just uh, painted my apple with this crimson red Waverly chalk paint. For the stem, I just use some light cinnamon brown color. For the leaf, I just used my holly green. I, like I said, my painted projects, I usually do the same way, especially my apple projects. I just take a, a, a flat paintbrush and dip it in paint and water and blend on a paper towel and then you know just give it some shading and so to uh, add some highlight and doodling I'm just using my very loved brush my little detail brush and just going around at the edges just to bring it to life I'm also going to add some splattering I have you know my brush and my uh, stem uh, not my stem my uh, toothpick and just go around my uh, project just to add you know the look that I like and uh, to expose a bit of the wood or just to you know continue with the um, country feel of the project I'm just taking my uh, sanding sponge and just rough you know going around the edges just to expose a bit of the raw wood to uh, you know just kind of tie all of this together These small houses from the Dollar Tree are pretty popular and there are a lot of creators that do have a lot of different designs, uh, you know, for them and, and using them. Uh, to get the house part off or the wood part off, I just took my knife uh, that I keep in my craft room for projects like this and I just slid it underneath that uh, where the wood in the back of the house meet and so that I could get the back of this house off. And so uh, then I'll just trace out that on my scrapbook paper and then adhere that uh, to this back of this house just with my adhesive tape. Uh, but you know, a person could mod podge or uh, use Elmer's glue or something like that but this is just what I have on hand. I'm just using a fingernail file that I pick up from the Dollar Tree in the makeup se section and uh, just get off any of the excess paper or the rough edges of the small houses. So then I have this brown rickrack that I picked up from nowhere else but Hobby Lobby. I'm just using my Fabri-Tac glue just to glue that down and uh, then I'll move on to what I'm going to do next which is adhere the back 
back of the house to the frame of the, uh, you know, like the wooden house. What I'm showing here is uh, I take just use my sanding sponge and just go around the house if there's any uh, like hangover paper or something like that. So then now I'm just using my Fabri-Tac glue and then attaching the frame to the uh, back of the house. I have these small trim ribbons that I have on hand and uh, probably they came from Hobby Lobby or the Dollar Tree or Walmart. Those are usually the places that I get them. And I cut them maybe, you know, about four, uh, about four inches. And then I just crisscross them because I'm going to make a messy bow. And uh, so I just uh, attach it in the middle and I use a pipe cleaner. Uh, I know some crafters that I watch use jute, but for some reason I can't get my jute tight enough. So I like to use a pipe cleaner and my needle nose pliers do help with getting uh, my pipe cleaner, you know, tight. And so I like my small bow to like pop. And so then now I'm just, you know, taking my black Sharpie marker. This is the fine Sharpie marker and just giving a uh, bit of, you know, just bringing it to life with the black Sharpie marker. And uh, so then I'm going to start putting my house. Well, my house is done, but I'm going to put my apple on my house. And so I have two Jenga blocks and I just want to give my apple a bit of dimension. I want it to sit up a bit. And so the uh, Timbling Tower Blocks helps me with that. So I just attach my apple to the house. I'm going to attach my bow. I also add some Excelsior because that does give it a bit of whimsiness. I kind of use the same thing and I feel like I am like a broken record. <laughs> I just feel like I, I continue to use the same thing because that is just my look. And I am so grateful that God uh, has sent so many wonderful country loving friends to my channel. Uh, your sweet comments just make my day. I tell you, uh, the majority of of the people love uh, who love this look and you leave me the sweetest comments I get the sweetest messages just to tell me how much you are enjoying these projects and how you are inspired and thank you so much for sharing with me so then I'm using that same fall foliage that I used in um, other uh, projects in this video and uh, I just cut off a piece of that and that is what I'm going to twist around to give it uh, you know just some color I do realize that it's a little bit thick so I go back and I kind of trim it off a bit uh, you know on the finished project just real quick for the apples I'm using two leftover pumpkins from Dollar Tree I just took off the stems in that raffia because I'm not going to use those I'm going to put my own stems on there and then for the actual 12 by 12 uh, like window that I'm considering my window what I used is a 12 by 12 canvas I just took off the canvas and then I'm going to show in this video I just added some antique wax just to give it some color and uh, to remove the staples I found a, an upholstery staple remover um, I got it off of Amazon it is linked in my Amazon favorites uh, you can find that in my link tree in the description box if that's something you're interested in or I did recently see one over in the uh, Walmart craft sewing section and they may have it at other places as well and then for the chicken wire I pulled out some uh, chicken wire that I had on hand for a little bit I did get this over at Walmart it is a rustic farmhouse chicken wire and even though it's rusty it wasn't like you know came off on my hands or anything like that so I just stapled that to the back of that 12 by 12 wood frame all right so then and for the little window box, I'm just using a leftover sign from the Dollar Tree as well. All right, so for my pumpkins, what I did is I uh, took off the sticker on the back, but it was a lot of, a little gummy. So I just decided to use the front like where the uh, words were. And so uh, to cover that up, I gave it a color of plaster color chalk paint just to kind of give it a buffer. And then for the red color, what I'm using is uh, crimson 
red color chalk paint. This is Waverly. You can get that over at Walmart. And so I gave that a couple of coats of that to make my apples the red color that I like. So I actually painted both sides of the pumpkin so that they would be, you know, completely finished. All right, so for my small window box, uh, what I'm sharing here is I picked up a uh, box of the Tumbling Tower blocks from five below. There are 48 uh, Jenga blocks in here or Tumbling Tower blocks are much bigger than the ones from the Dollar Tree. And I love to use Jenga blocks for dimension. And so I put a couple of those in the uh, that little box just to give it some height. And so what I was sharing um, is I get a box of these small E6000 tubes off of Amazon. They're linked in my Amazon favorites. Um, because I have a love-hate relationship with E6000 and, and I just cannot handle the large tube for whatever reason, it dries out, I mess up, it oozes out. So these small E6000 tubes work best for me. All right, so to uh, just real quick, and like I said, I'm just kind of recapping this, but if you want to see in real time, uh, slow motion, how I, you know, paint all, all of this, look for the video link in the iCard as well as in the description box. All right, so to shade my apples, what I use is my uh, flat paintbrush. It's about a half of an inch and I dip half of my brush in paint, the other half in clean water. And then I blend on a paper towel and then I shade around just to give it some depth. All right. So then uh, for the doodling, what I use is my what I consider my finishing brush and I use some buttermilk acrylic paint and just go around and just give it some squiggles and uh, just you know make it look cute the way that I like to do that then I give it a uh, some paint splattering I do black first and then I go back over it with the buttermilk just to give it the color that I like then for the apple kind of like highlight I just use my round brush just to give it a comma or a swoosh there in the top now I'm going to uh, stand one of these pumpkins upright and then the other one I'm just going to stand on the side so I will glue the stem on one of them at the top and then I glue the other one to, on the side now what I'm sharing is I had taken my sanding sponge and just went around each of the apples just to expose a bit of the wood and then just get off any of the dust particles. This is my favorite gloss varnish that I like to use and uh, you can find that in the craft store or it is linked in my Amazon favorites if it's something that you would like to have shipped to you. Okay, so then uh, for my frame, like I said, this is a 12 by 12 canvas and that chicken wire I got from Walmart in the uh, craft section. And so I just take a baby wipe and some antique wax and just uh, go around and give it some color just to distress it a bit. And then this is how that looks. I go on the inside as well as all around the edges, you know, so that everything is covered. And then for my apples, I pulled out this greenery bush that I got from Hobby Lobby, pulling off some of the smaller leaves. And I think that's perfect for the apples. And then uh, what I'm, uh, I have pulled out some of that green ribbon that I got from the Dollar Tree and then some uh, homespun fabric as well as muslin fabric. I just tore strips of that uh, just to give it that torn edge. And then I'm going to wrap that around the stem. Well, then I remembered, oh no, I wanna put some of the Excelsior that I like too. And then also I go back and uh, I tie it and then I'm like, silly girl you forgot to put your green ribbon in there uh, that kind of gives it some texture and just some you know just cuteness that I like and so uh, yeah I do make mistakes I promise uh, I always have to go back and correct it and that kind of thing but hey it's what it is the beauty in the crafting and so um, I just cut off a piece of that green ribbon uh, as I said I got that from Dollar Tree and so then I just tie that on so that everything is nice and cute <laughs>
Once my apples are done, I'm going to work on my window box. And this is the greenery that I also got from Hobby Lobby that I'm using in the window box. So I have glued that to my uh, frame just with E6000 and hot glue. And then um, what I'm showing here is I just pulled out some uh, styrofoam and that is going, I'm just going to cut that small pieces so that I can stick those greenery you know stems into so that they're all secure all right so for my banner uh for my pickin banner what i used is some duck cloth that i got from i can't remember i've had it for so long but you can get fabric duck cloth at walmart hobby lobby joann's that kind of thing and so then i just made me a template and uh just out of an index card and this is two and a half by one and a half and so the two and a half is uh the uh, height of it because I needed it to bend around my sisal twine so that it would be secure. So I cut out uh, the um, six pieces of this and then I'm going to just use my black sharpie marker just to hand letter uh, pick in and then I'm going to glue that on to my sisal twine. I bend over the uh, top of it so that you know it is secure. I make sure that when I'm gluing it that my letters are, uh, you know, or that my little flag or my little pennant is facing the right way so that when it hangs, it hangs correctly. So I just stuck my greenery in the styrofoam all the way around so that, you know, I like the look. I just love the way that it just, just looks so whimsy. And then these fall daisies I got from Hobby Lobby, cut off a couple of stems of those and stuck that in there. <gasps> just so cute. And then uh, for my uh, banner, what I did is I just tied it where it just hung like that. I just tied that sisal twine at the top and just made sure that it hung correctly. Now for the time uh, word for my uh, sign, what I use is one of these little chalkboards from Dollar Tree. And then I took off the stick of it because I wanted to glue, it was a little bit too um, short. So I needed it to stand up a little bit higher. So I just took off the stem and then, uh, I mean that, not stem, the stick. And then I will, once my, um, word dried then I just glued it barely in the back so that it would stand up a little bit higher and then I just tied a couple of strands of homespun fabric as well as the muslin fabric just to kind of mask the stick and just make sure that everything was secure. This next project is going to take a little bit of your imagination. They are my square apples using Dollar Tree canvases. So what I'm starting with are three canvases from the Dollar Tree. The larger one is an eight by 10 and the two smaller ones are four by sixes. And so what I did is just turn one one way, one the other way to give me the different sizes of the apples. So I gave uh, the edges a coat of crimson color chalk paint just to, you know, give it the color of the red of the apple. Now for the scrapbook paper, this is just some scrapbook paper that I had on hand. You can get red and white scrapbook paper at Hobby Lobby, Michael's, 
Amazon, any place like that. What I'm going to do is cut it down to size and I'm going to be adhering it to the canvases with some uh, Mod Podge. And I use the Mod Podge heat transfer method. If you don't know, if you're not familiar with that, just really quick, I'll just share. You put a layer of Mod Podge uh, or did on my canvas. I'll let that dry. Then to, uh, I cut my paper down to size and to attach the paper to the canvas, I just heated it up with my Cricut mini press or a, a little mini iron would work and just heated that and attached the paper to the canvas. Now, before I attached it, I went ahead and gave it to some distress ink and uh, with a vintage photo, that is what I like to do. And then I just added some just embellishments as far as, um, you know, just some extras just with my squiggly paint and a black Sharpie marker and all of that good stuff. After I gave some paint splattering to my apples, what I did is uh, for the stem of the apples, I'm using some giant wood craft sticks. Now I get these in a pack from Walmart. And so I gave them the brown stain color using some Waverly antique wax. And so then I'll continue. I'll embellish them up, like doodle them up, uh, just with my white paint, my, uh, black sharpie marker and then i'll continue to work on these apples and i'll you know uh put all of this together i'm going to be adding some embellishments as far as i, I hand lettered a little tag a little market tag that said farm fresh apples I'll be attaching that i'm going to be adding some bows and some fun uh, embellishments that I got from Hobby Lobby, Walmart, that type of thing, Dollar Tree. You can get these type of embellishments that I have. And uh, I don't know, I just love these so much. And I love uh, creating these for the fall season because apples are not just for uh, spring or anything like that. They can be used for fall too. So I'll just let the, you know, video play and just you know, if there's something that you, that I'm doing and you don't know the answer to, leave me a comment and I'll be happy to answer any question that you have.
so I'll tie my little tag here to my apples and then um, just kind of holding it up here kind of sharing what my apples look like now here I made some square pumpkins using some of those same size canvases and so I will leave a link to that video if you would like to check out the square pumpkins using those canvases as well so I love the way that these square apples turned out and I hope that you do too. For my Dollar Tree farmhouse apple, this is the supplies I use. Now uh, that apple is from the Dollar Tree and the uh, whiteboard scrapbook paper. Well, actually, both of them are from uh, Hobby Lobby. So I wanted, uh, you know, a part of that checkered to be at the bottom. So what I'm doing is tracing out the whiteboard and I trace it on the front because I want to make sure that I get my slats the right way. And then I just cut it out completely. Then what I'm going to use is the heat uh, the Mod Podge heat transfer method and so before I do that I cut out the bottom of the uh, checkered paper that came from a stack or actually a pack from Hobby Lobby that had different colors of uh, check paper in it I love it so much check gingham all this stuff is totally my heart so I'm going to distress it a bit with my vintage photo distress ink that you can also get in the scrapbooking section and so I go around uh, just the paper and just add some brown to it I also added in between uh, you know the paper so that it kind of roughens it up not roughens it up it doesn't give it any texture but it actually looks distress because of the inking and so then uh, I had given the apple a coat of Mod Podge and so I let that completely dry then I'm just using my little iron which is my Cricut mini press and just press that on I use a, a piece of parchment paper in between just to add as a buffer now to add the bottom part of the apple I actually did the uh, put a coat of Mod Podge on that let that dry and then attach the bottom part of the apple the same way now I'm going to add uh, or actually start working on my bow and so I have some of this burlap that I got from the Dollar Tree I cut off a piece of that then I cut it in half so that I can wrap it around uh, this is going to be what is going to be on the stem of my apple and so I just you know glue that down then uh, now I'm going to work on the bow I'm just using some of this ribbon from Hobby Lobby at first I thought I would you know use it like the regular size but I ended up cutting that in half like that and then just adding some of those leaves like this also came from Hobby Lobby and then also some strips of muslin fabric some gingham fabric some lace and then I'm just going to be using some of this those jute strings that kind of came from that burlap they kind of uh, fell off and I just love that it looks very rustic and very whimsy to me and so I just gather everything together and then I just tie it all together all, all of it together just with a piece of muslin fabric and then that is what I use to attach to the top of my apple.
I'm going to share how I created this Country Fresh Apples deco mesh wreath. Now what I'm starting with is a 14 inch wire frame. I get these from the Dollar Tree as well as some 21 inch burlap deco mesh that comes from Hobby Lobby. Now what I do is I start in uh, one place at the top and I secure it. Then I go across and attach it. And this is one of my favorite ways to make deco mesh wreath bases. I do it like this because I do put a sign on my wreaths and I feel that it kind of gives a little cushion, gives a little bit for my sign, a little cushion, as I mentioned, that is why I do this. And so then what I'm doing is I'm making uh, the bubble technique and these inner bubbles are about eight inches. And so I just go and I, you know, just kind of guesstimate. I don't pull out my ruler or anything uh, a person can. Each wreath maker has their own style of making wreaths and that kind of thing. And for this 21 inch roll of deco mesh, I can get two bases out of this, uh, out of this one roll. And so then back to um, how I attach it, I just attach it with some pipe cleaners. And I again, go in the inner ring and then once I get to all the way around, then I'll switch to the outer ring. And so then the inner ring is about eight inches and then the outer ring is about nine to 10 inches, depending on how big I want my wreath. But this is just how I make one of the burlap deco mesh bases that I do for my country style wreaths. Now I do have a wreath basics playlist that you can find in the description box below. In my link tree, I do have a wreath basics playlist of different steps that I take to create these country style wreaths. So then when I finish putting this 21 inch deco mesh on, I will be left with 12 pipe cleaners and then I will uh, cut 10 inch deco mesh and then layer that on there. So for this particular wreath, I'm using three 10 inch deco mesh. The burlap uh, came from Hobby Lobby and the red and the green came from Craft Outlet. So I'm going to cut the burlap uh, with the deco mesh, I mean with the snowball, uh, that's kind of like what I call it, snowball deco mesh. I cut those at 14 inches as well as this burlap, I cut those at 14 inches. And so then what I do is I make my cruffles, I bend over one end and then I bend over the other end and then I gather it in the middle. I clip it just to kind of help myself. Uh, I do both of those the same way. I make an X pattern where they're not quite on top of each other. And so then for the next one, I'll do the opposite way. I'll do one, I'll put the snowball mesh on top and then the other one, I'll put the burlap mesh on top just to kind of alternate it uh, because I just want a hint of it in my wreath. Okay, so for this specialty mesh, this red and green, I'm cutting that at 12 inches. And so then I do the same thing just by bending over the ends, gathering in the middle. And then that is the only one that I'm going to be putting into uh, one of the uh, pipe cleaners. Now, first um, I have 12 pipe cleaners, so I have made 12 bundles of these uh, burlap mesh. So I put one in one, uh, one uh, pipe cleaner and then I drop down to the other one. And then I do continue all the way around the wreath until you know I get all of those in basically in a zigzag pattern. Now, when I'm finished putting all of these uh, 10 inch deco mesh in, that's when I will go back and I will find the holes. And what I consider the holes are in between the deco mesh. I will put a, an extra pipe cleaner in there. And then that is what I put that red and green, uh, you know, deco mesh in there just to give it the fullness that I like for my wreath.
Once I get all of my 10 inch deco mesh in there, I have 18 uh, pipe cleaners, so I need lots of ribbon. I like to use lots of ribbon in my wreaths, and so I need 18 bundles. Now, this is the apple sign that I'm using for the wreath that came from the Dollar Tree. Now, all of these ribbons are just fun ribbons that I've gotten. I'm using uh, three different sets of ribbons, so how I have them positioned right here, those are the sets that I am using. Uh, the first set that I cut all of these at 13 inches and they all came from Hobby Lobby. Uh, I dovetail all of them uh, with the exception of the window pane. I do not dovetail that one. And so I just make my bundles. I have showed this many, many times, but for my new viewers, I make my bundles. I staple them. I use a little tiny attacher just to help you know secure them so that I can make my bundles and go the red and white ribbon here came from Hobby Lobby the black came from Walmart and the white burlap uh, quarterfold came from Hobby Lobby as well and so that quarterfold I choose not to dovetail either because I don't like it the way it looks when it's quarter I mean when it's dovetail uh, and that is just putting a little V cut in the end of the ribbon. Now this uh, right here, the burlap with the red gingham on the end came from Hobby Lobby as well as that green came from Hobby Lobby and then that red and white. Uh, that reminds me of a picnic basket for some reason. Uh, whatever. Uh, but yeah, I just like that. That one came from craft outlet and so like I said I'm just ready to go I have all of my bundles ready to go so then also I added some uh, ties some um, what I do with the raffia is I just make you know little knots in it and then I choose which ribbon bundle I'm going to be putting that in and then that's what I stick with all right so I just open the pipe cleaner and I just stick in my ribbon I've showed this many many times I use the same format on all all of my wreaths but for my new viewers what I do is I just untwist that pipe cleaner I put the uh, you know bundle of ribbon in there depending on which one I wanted to put the raffia in uh, and then I twist it Back, I cut off the excess of the pipe cleaner make sure that my ribbon tails are not stuck underneath there and then that you know I just keep moving on basically zigzag pattern up down up down up down until I get all of the ribbon into my wreath For the apple, it's already really cute, but I'm going to kick it up a notch and add a few of my touches on it because as I say, the beauty is in the details. All right, so I just use my little liner brush and some white paint and just add some squiggles and some doodles to the apples. I'll also add some around the apple itself and uh, you know just to bring it out a bit more I also add some black sharpie marker on the apples just to make them pop I will also add a bit of white uh, paint splattering to it and how I paint splatter is just running my brush over a stiff brush and um, you know I run the stick over the bristles toward my body so that the paint will project onto, you know, what I am trying to splatter paint. And so I just, you know, go, that's how I pattern, uh, paint splatter. All right. So then uh, now what I want to do is I want to cover the stem of the apple and I just have this ribbon. This burlap came from Hobby Lobby. I'm just going to wrap that around there and, um, you know, just glue it in place. And then here's where I was like, oh yeah, you want to add some black sharpen marker. So I can't forget that. All right, so then now for the bow, um, this green and white ribbon also came from Hobby Lobby. That's in also the uh, some ribbon that I had used in the body of the wreath. So I just make a two loop bow like that. I'll just continue to cut off different uh, pieces of ribbon. I like to use a lot of different colors uh, as far as like I pull out colors from in the sign. Uh, now this 
ribbon right there that also came from Hobby Lobby and yeah I'll just continue to layer my bow until I like the look of it. To attach the sign to my wreaths, I like to use these one inch cable ties as well as pipe cleaners. I use these upholstery needles uh, just to thread the pipe cleaner uh, through the, or th yeah, thread the pipe cleaner of the sign through my deco mesh and then I attach the, that pipe cleaner to the back of my wreath, to that wreath frame and so that my sign is secure uh, and that it stays on there really nice. All right, these berries came from uh, Hobby Lobby as well. They're off of a garland and I just love the way that it just gives a different texture to my country style wreaths. 